Some people know him as the wisest man to ever live, and to some he is considered a deity in how he impacted the world. But the real question remains, who is Buddha? Buddha, also known as the Awakened One, personal name Siddhartha, or Siddhartha, who was born in the 6th, 4th century BCE in Lumbini, now in Nepal, died in the Magadha Kingdom, now Kaesia, India, the founder of Buddhism, one of the major religions and philosophical systems of Southern and Eastern Asia and of the world. Buddha is one of the many epithets of a teacher who lived in northern India sometime between the 6th and the 4th century before the Common Era. His followers, known as Buddhists, propagated the religion that is known today as Buddhism. The title Buddha was used by a number of religious groups in ancient India. and had a range of meanings, but it came to be associated most strongly with the tradition of Buddhism and to mean an enlightened being, one who has awakened from the sleep of ignorance and achieved freedom from suffering. According to the various traditions of Buddhism, there have been Buddhas in the past, and there will be Buddhas in the future. Some forms of Buddhism hold that there is only one Buddha for each historical age. Others hold that all beings will eventually become Buddhas because they possess the Buddha nature, Tathagatagarbha. All forms of Buddhism celebrate various events in the life of the Buddha Gautama, including his birth, enlightenment and passage into Nirvana. In some countries, the three events are observed on the same day, which is called Wesak in Southeast Asia. In other regions, the festivals are held on different days and incorporate a variety of rituals and practices. The birth of the Buddha is celebrated in April or May, depending upon the lunar date in these countries. In Japan, which does not use a lunar calendar, the Buddha's birth is celebrated on April 8th. With a native Shinto ceremony into the flower festival known as Hanamatsuri. The Buddha was born in Lumbini, Ruminde, near Kapilavastu, Kapilbastu, on the northern edge of the Ganges River Basin, an area on the periphery of the civilization of North India, in what is today southern Nepal. Scholars speculate that during the late Vedic period, the peoples of the region were organized into tribal republics, ruled by a council of elders or an elected leader. The grand palaces described in the traditional accounts of the life of the Buddha are not evident among the archaeological remains. It is unclear to what extent these groups at the periphery of the social order of the Ganges Basin were incorporated into the caste system, but the Buddha's family is said to have belonged to the warrior, Kshatriya, caste. The central Ganges Basin was organised into some 16 city-states, ruled by kings, often at war with each other. The rise of these cities of central India, with their courts and their commerce, brought social, political and economic changes that are often identified as key factors in the rise of Buddhism and other religious movements of the 6th and 5th centuries BCE. Buddhist texts identify a variety of itinerant teachers who attracted groups of disciples. Some of these taught forms of meditation, yoga and asceticism, and set forth philosophical views, focusing often on the nature of the person and the question of whether human actions, karma, have future effects. Buddhist theories of time and history. According to Buddhist doctrine, the universe is the product of karma, the law of the cause and effect of actions, 
according to which virtuous actions create pleasure in the future and non-virtuous actions create pain. The beings of the universe are reborn without beginning in six realms, as gods, demigods, humans, animals, ghosts, and hell beings. The actions of these beings create not only their individual experiences, but the domains in which they dwell. The cycle of rebirth, called samsara, literally wandering, is regarded as a domain of suffering, and the ultimate goal of Buddhist practice is to escape from that suffering. The means of escape remains unknown until, over the course of millions of lifetimes, a person perfects himself, ultimately gaining the power to discover the path out of samsara and then compassionately revealing that path to the world. A person who has set out on the long journey to discover the path to freedom from suffering and then to teach it to others is called a bodhisattva. A person who has discovered that path, followed it to its end and taught it to the world is called a Buddha. Buddhas are not reborn after they die, but enter a state beyond suffering called nirvana, literally passing away. Because Buddhas appear so rarely over the course of time, and because only they reveal the path to liberation, moksha, from suffering, dukkha, the appearance of a Buddha in the world is considered a momentous event in the history of the universe. The story of a particular Buddha begins before his birth and extends beyond his death. It encompasses the millions of lives spent on the Bodhisattva path before the achievement of Buddhahood and the persistence of the Buddha in the form of both his teachings and his relics after he has passed into Nirvana. The historical Buddha is regarded as neither the first nor the last Buddha to appear in the world. According to some traditions, he is the seventh Buddha. According to another, he is the 25th. According to yet another, he is the fourth. The next Buddha, named Maitreya, will appear after Shakyamuni's teachings, and relics have disappeared from the world. The traditional accounts of the events in the life of the Buddha must be considered from this perspective. Accounts of the life of the Buddha appear in many forms. Perhaps the earliest are those found in the collections of sutras, discourses traditionally attributed to the Buddha. In the sutras, the Buddha recounts individual events in his life that occurred from the time that he renounced his life as a prince until he achieved enlightenment six years later. Several accounts of his enlightenment also appear in the sutras. One text the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, Discourse on the Final Nirvana, describes the Buddha's last days, his passage into Nirvana, his funeral, and the distribution of his relics. Biographical accounts in the early sutras provide little detail about the Buddha's birth and childhood, although some sutras contain a detailed account of the life of a prehistoric Buddha Vipashin. Watch out for part two. A lot of work has gone into this video, so please do well to like and subscribe to see part two. Have an amazing day.